Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be diving into a more advanced topic, all to do with EQ. It's one that's often overlooked, but it can come in extremely helpful in certain situations. So let's just dive right in, take a listen, and get going. Firstly, these techniques work in any DAW, and they work with a lot of EQ plugins. Not every EQ plugin will support this, but I'll show you what you need to look for. So I'm going to use two different plugins today, the first of which is the Ozone 9 Equalizer, because it's really graphic, it's very easy for me to show you what's going on. So firstly, you're aware that a typical EQ will affect all of the signal together, left, right, center, mid, all of it's going to be affected the same way. So if I play some guitar and I boost the high end, it's going to boost the high end of both the left and right channels together. So when you're affecting both sides the same way, that's just a typical stereo EQ. Now forgive this menu, it's quite small, but you've also got other modes on most EQs. So what we're going to be looking at specifically is left-right EQ, but there's also mid-side EQ where you can treat the center channel and the side channels of a stereo signal differently, which is also a really cool effect. But today, left-right EQ, and this is often overlooked. I think a lot of people just forget that it's in their toolkit, but it can come in so handy. One of the things I like about this channel is that I can just introduce an idea, then you can apply it to any sound or anything you're working on. So I'm going to show you this on some guitar, but hopefully you can think outside the box and apply this to synthesizers, vocals, anything really. The problem with this guitar recording is that it was one guitar being recorded with two mics, which is a really common technique. One was on the body, one was on the frets. The issue is they've been panned, not completely panned, but you know, 60-70%, and now in my left ear I've got a lot of bass, in my right ear I've got a lot of high end, and that might work for some mixes, but in this case, it lacks cohesion. It doesn't sound unified at all. So I'm going to play the raw guitar, no EQ or anything, and you'll hear that it's just really wide. It doesn't sound like one guitar. It sounds phasey and just not great, to be honest. Let's take a listen. I mean, it sounds okay, but it's really not a good recording. The best thing to do would be to go back, record it, and mix it properly. However, this was sent to me as a stem. I can't re-record it. I can't really do anything else with it. So what I'm going to do is show you uh, the left and right channels independently. So in this EQ, I can just press the solo button here and listen to just the left channel. Let's take a listen. You can hear a lot of bass in there. Now I'm going to solo the right channel. So there's a lot less bass, just a really nice high-end sparkle. So in order to balance this out, what I'm actually going to do is solo the left channel, and I'm just going to remove some of the bass only from the left-hand side, which will keep all that nice bass on the right channel. So let's press play, and we'll hunt around for a frequency uh, that we want to cut a little bit of. So it's this kind of frequency. I'm just going to cut a little bit of it away, just like that. That's actually quite a lot of it away. Whilst I'm at it, I'm just going to add a bit of a high pass filter as well, because I don't need that bass. So now what I'm going to do is solo the right channel, change over to the right here, and I might just boost a little bit of that bass again, add that high pass, because I just don't need that low end. Great. So now it's time for a quick before and after. I'm going to start with the plugin turned off. Notice that it doesn't feel very united, feels a little bit wide, a bit too spacey. I'll kick the plug-in in and it should just sound a little bit less wide, but nice and cohesive. So let's take a listen. Now depending on the headphones or speakers you're listening to, it should be quite a noticeable change. Is it better or worse? Well, it really depends on the mix. In this case, this song is a simple vocal and guitar, so I want the guitar to actually sound quite together. I don't want it to be super wide and all over the place. So now let's think of other places we can apply this. Often when I'm going through synthesizers, going through presets and banks, patches, uh, I find some like really nice pad sounds and key sounds, but on some of them, there's just a really odd like harmonic that's just grating away in the right speaker or there's a silly little effect on the left-hand side, and sometimes you don't know how to adjust the synth and get rid of it. So what you can do is just load up a left-right EQ, go onto the right channel, take that frequency away, taken care of. Another fantastic use of this is with backing vocals. So sometimes you just send a whole stack of backing vocals in one stem, they don't have the originals, and there's like lots of sibilance just on one side, just the left side. You can go in, 
go to around 4 or 5k, cut that away, sort it. And now I know there will be a handful of people already writing comments about how I've destroyed the phase of the sound because I'm using EQ. So there's two things you should look out for as well. One, use a linear phase EQ if you're worried about phase. The second thing is to use your ears because what's more important than phase is that it sounds good. The guitar was already recorded out of phase. It's not perfectly in phase. The other effects I do are gonna mess with that more. So the most important thing when applying effects like this is just listen to it back in mono. So you can go to your mixer and just fold the master channel into mono on FL Studio. All you have to do is go here, just do that. Or I have another plugin here, which I use, it's called BX Solo. So I use this for, you know, my mono stereo compatibility stuff. I think that's a free plugin. I'll add a title if it is or if it isn't. I'm just gonna let you hear the example one more time and then I'll move on to the next one. Because to me, in these headphones, although the EQ has technically messed with the phase, I think it sounds far less phasey. I think it sounds way more unified and just sounds really, really good compared to the original tone. So in that example, the left and right channel started off different, two different microphones. However, the next example is a mono signal. So if I press play. So in this case, there's a left and a right channel, but they are absolutely identical, which gives me this mono sound. really really beautiful playing as well so what i'm going to do now is use this left and right channel eq i'm using tr5 equal it looks a bit different to ozone but just here there's an l and an r left and right so what i'm doing this time is i'm going to fake stereo width by going to that left channel and actually boosting about 2 db at 100 hertz going to my right channel and just giving this nice gentle boost to the whole high end so this time i'm actually trying to make it sound wider so now I'm going to turn this off and then on, and you'll hear that it just changes the stereo width quite a bit, actually. Using left-right EQ like this can be a great way to fake some stereo width. If you're looking at a guitar in front of you, the body's going to be on the left-hand side, you're going to get a little bit more bass, the uh, strings and frets are kind of on the right-hand side, you're going to get a little bit more brightness from that side. And sometimes this just works better than a stereo widening plugin. Because don't get me wrong, I love stereo widening plugins. Uh, this one from Leapwing Audio Stage 1, I'm really enjoying that right now. I like the Ozone Imager, the free one. But sometimes on acoustic guitar, I don't know if you've experienced this, stereo widening plugins can just ruin them. They end up sounding like you've just thrown a load of chorus onto it, which, is, which might sound cool, but it's not what I want. So sometimes just putting some left-right EQ can add a subtle difference. But in that case... I did lose a bit of the quality of the guitar. So as always, use your ears and apply this to absolutely anything. And just to round off the video, the DAW I'm using right now, FL Studio 20 Signature Edition, I'm gonna give it away to one of you guys that's watching. So if you comment down below some of your favorite EQ tips and tricks, if you leave a comment of advice in the comments section, I'll pick one of you at random, I'll announce it in the next video and you'll win a copy of FL Studio 20 Signature Edition or an upgrade if you already have FL Studio. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.